We thank you, God, for making us in your image. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam She'asani Yisrael You made me a Jew Ba 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 Yam bam ba 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 bam 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 ba 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 bam 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 ba 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 bam 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 ba 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 bam Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam She Asani Ben Chorim You who have given us freedom La 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 Ivrihim, you who have given us vision. Ba 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 Atahavaya Eloheinu Ruach Haoholam Malbish Urahamim You who close this, the naked Yadada now, anyone know what that melody is from? I can't hear you, Carol Ann. Were you saying something? Still, you're muted. Uh, it sounds familiar. <laughs> it's from the Havdalah service. Oh. So I'm just giving a few uh, melodies that we can do morning blessings. Here's another one. Um, let's see. Ya da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Matirasurim You help us to surrender Yadai 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 Ya da 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 Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu HaMelech HaOlam 
so cave coo theme. Bum 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 bum. Da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu. Melech HaOlam, you give us strength. Ba da 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 da, ya da 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 da, ya da 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 da, ya da 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 da. Could you put up, please? Um, you know, um. I'm going to pull it fast when I'm Deborah. Where'd she go? She disappeared. She disappeared. Her system went down. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to keep she going. Just, with she, she just uh, texted me to wonder if we were still there. Oh, we're still here. All right. So I'm going to continue, uh, even though she's the screen shared Gazumbai. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll make do without it for now. Um, anyway, uh, I talked a lot last week. I gave. Uh, 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 hopefully a little bit of an evolution of the morning blessings. And um, tonight we're going to do some of the morning blessings in a few different ways. And mostly adding in optionally some movement and singing along with the blessings. Um, as Reb Zalman said, you know, it's time. Uh, the body wants to pray too. So we're going to give it a chance. And um, one of the things I'm going to do is I am going to uh, really try to um, give the blessings the way that I personally do them most of the time. And it's riding my bicycle. Uh, so, you know, I'll be like this and, you know, you'll curve and I'll curve with you and so on. And uh, anyway, um, that's one thing. And I also really want to do, uh, uh, are you familiar with Rabbi Shefa Gold? Yes. Um, she has wonderful choreography and movements and she, she uh, choreographed a wonderful um, piece to the morning blessings. And I, I, I hope you'll really like it. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> if you're- um, Mark? If you're, yes. Um, my computer did some really weird in, and uh -huh. it, it shut down and it's starting I don't can't do a screen share on okay. my phone all right but That's I'm glad okay. zoomed in all right so uh, without screen share um, I'm just gonna show this I, let's see if this comes up um, can you see some of those there's a woman with her talus and filling on, doing some po yoga postures. See that? There's downward dog. There's a cobra posture, and a few others there. Anyways, um, I show you that because I've had the privilege to publish a piece in the Peneyor Sidur or Chadash, which we did way back when. And uh, these were the pictures that are in the Sidur um, showing us how to move to the different morning blessings. So essentially, it's yoga to morning blessings. And, I, and part of the piece I did was on active davening. And I told uh, how I would ride my bike to work in, um, in um, uh, when I was working, I would commute on my bicycle and I had a beautiful commute, uh, seeing lakes and trees and gorgeous stuff. And that was my morning blessing, you know, as I'm saying, you know, thanking God for uh, making the waters rise above the land or uh, the land above the waters. I'm, I'm looking at it and um, it's sort of similar to what Rev Zaman, uh I described last week when he described getting out of bed and um, he said, um, we thank God uh, to anchor me in this life. So I love when he said, the body tells the soul to wake up and smell the universe. So he starts his morning blessings 
he thanks God for him having the ability to straighten out to stand up out of his bed. He thanks God for, for vision as he's putting on his glasses. He thanks God for clothing the naked as he's putting on clothing for warmth and protection. He thanks God for supplying my every need as he's putting on his shoes. He thanks God for helping our bodies to function properly as he's coming out of the bathroom. He thanks God for grounding us and giving me the energy to function today and to go out and do tikkun olam. He thanks God for removing the last traces of sleep from our eyelids. So he lays out a, um, a way to start your day. Modeani, thank you for returning my soul. Thank you, God, for my body is functioning properly. Wake up, body, and let's smell the roses. And um, so there's many ways to do it. You know, you can do it with yoga. You can do it traditionally in a siddur. Um, you can just go outside and be thankful and smell the flowers. Um, so um, <laughs> I was just about to <laughs> ask for a screen share, but I don't have that. Let me just pop it a little bit. Okay. Um, so since I can't give you the words, um, I'm going to ask you to echo me and I'm, we're going to do Rabbi Shefa Gold's morning blessings. It's wonderful choreography. Um, so it starts in the sitting position. And if those of you who are able and would like to, um, part of the choreography is sitting and then standing up doing some movement and then sitting back down. So if you could just you'll get in a position where you're able to do this, um, you'll get the full benefit of the choreography. And if not, you'll watch, you'll, and you'll learn. But uh, I always find it, I'm a very keen aesthetic learner, so I learn by doing. Um, but that's my personal learning style. Um, and that's why we also do things in, in, in the verbal, in the visual. I like to combine all the ways that people take in information. So um, it starts with our arms folded like this. And it goes, the morning will unfold for us. So let's do that together. The morning will unfold for us. Life will rise from dust. Life will rise from dust. We're rising in remembrance. We're rising in remembrance of your love, of your love. And then it goes with a sway. I'm trying to back my chair up here a little. You're swaying and snapping your fingers. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And then we sit again. So um, let's just go through that part and we'll do that again together. And then um, we, we'll have to echo each of the, uh, of the parts. And incidentally, when we do this, uh, when I had the screen share, one way that Reb Zalman always asked us to pray from a Siddur was to not keep your nose in the Siddur where you're just, um, you're, you're actually held prisoner um, by, the, um, um, by the words in the, on the paper. So he would always advocate, you glance at a line and then you look away and um, and have the kavanah of taking it into your heart. That's where that's where um, the prayers are are headed to our heart mind. Um, so a lot of times he would say, you know, when you have your nose in the in the seat door, you're only getting your mind. When you when you look up, you, you bring your heart into it as well. So again, you'll repeat. The, I, mean, I almost got up too soon. <laughs> 
The morning will unfold for us. The morning will unfold for us. Life will rise from dust. Life will rise from dust. We're rising in remembrance. We're rising in remembrance of your love, of your love. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So you open up your eyes to see, open up your eyes to see. You have made us free. You have made us free. We're rising in remembrance. We're rising in remembrance. I have your love. I have your love. Hallelujah. 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 You lift us up when we are down. You lift us up when we are down. You share with us your royal crown. You share with us your royal crown. We're rising in remembrance. We're rising in remembrance. I have your love. I have your love. Hallelujah. 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 Now we're going to march in place. You guide our steps at every turn. You guide our steps at every turn. You teach us what we need to learn. You teach us what we need to learn. We're rising in remembrance. We're rising in remembrance. I have your love. I have your love. Hallelujah. 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 You give us strength when we are weak. You give us strength when we are weak. Reminding us of what we seek. Reminding us of what we seek. We're rising in remembrance. We're rising in remembrance. I have your love. I have your love. Hallelujah. 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 Beyond imagination, beyond imagination, your presence fills creation. Your presence fills creation. We're rising in remembrance. We're rising in remembrance. I have your love. I have your love. Hallelujah. 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 Lift the slumber from our eyes. You lift the slumber from our eyes. You signal for the sun to rise. You signal for the sun to rise. We're rising in remembrance. We're rising in remembrance. I have your love. I have your love. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Boy, what a wake, what a way to wake up. Now, mm-hmm. none of us will get to sleep tonight because we're all going to be buzzing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, um, I've done that at the workshops with, you know, 150 people in the room and it's in a giant circle. It's just, Okay. Um, all right. Um, let me uh, mix it up a little bit with a little bit of uh, quiet or something. So what I'd like to do is um, pick out a few of um, the morning blessings and do a couple of go arounds and have Uh, people give their input on what they think uh, some of these words mean to you. Um, And and then I'll share some things from perhaps a different perspective. Um, We've already seen that Rev Zalman uh, gave that perspective of a good time to wake up 
and thank God as we're doing the things that we normally do in our wake up routine. Mm -hmm. We can go a lot deeper. Uh, these can become, in fact, um, I, uh, I proposed a, a whole class um, where I proposed that the morning blessings are a microcosm for the entire service. They include all four worlds. So we find um, some, wait, we find some feeling, of course, the body we just did, some atzilut in the spiritual realm, in the soul uh, realm, and uh, in the intellectual realm. Um, and understanding, to know the difference, you know, it even says an understanding, that's head stuff. So we can find the four worlds within, and that's the structure of a whole service is the four worlds going from one level to the next, to the next, to the next. Mm -hmm. So um, I, th I find there's a lot of richness in this. Sometimes when I finish, I, uh, I probably will say a Shema and ask God for maybe a few things for the day. Sometimes that's it. I don't, I don't, uh, that's my whole service sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think a good way to start is, uh, let me just show this screen share a little bit, because I'm going to refer to the tree of life. Now, uh, here, when I say the H Chaim, uh, this is the tree of light. These circles are different attributes of God. We call those sphere rote, they're energy centers. In this diagram here, uh, you can see that our yud hey vav hey lines up with the, the chakra system in the yoga yogic uh, um, philosophy uh, wow. in, the, in the Buddhist. So um, there is so much similarity when you get to the, the spiritual levels. A, a, a teacher of mine, uh, Andrea Kiner, Rabbi Andrea Kiner, she once said, I love this, she said that we're all going to the same mountaintop, but we don't know each other are there until we get above tree line. <laughs> so uh, in other words, until we get into the spiritual realm above the tree line, we don't know that there's other seekers out there doing the same thing we are. We're all going to the same place. We're all <laughs> worshiping the same God. Aha. And so I love showing the diagram that shows the different interfaith uh, things uh, because I really believe that uh, there's one truth and none of us have the whole story. So um, that's responsible, I think, for some of the struggles in the world. Uh, I have the truth. No, you have the truth. And, you know, we fight over it. It's, it's kind of mm -hmm. crazy. Um, but the last diagram here in the bottom shows those two things are imposed. So not only are the, is the tree of life, we'll call that the supernal tree of life, a diagram of the attribute, or we'll just say the structure of God. God consists of love and strength and a lot of other attributes. Um, and this shows that so do we. So in a sense, when I say we're made in God's image. This is the image that I come up with. And it's also in the four worlds. We start in the world of the body because we have a body. God gave us a body. Um, we are sparks of energy of spirit in a clipot, which is matter. We're composed of energy and matter spirit and body um, and feeling. We go up to the next level and intellect and a soul. So our structure, it's hard to do this backwards. Our structure um, emulates the God structure. So mm -hmm. another way of looking at it is we say, a, we'll, we'll just imagine a yud he vav he. I had that here. Those are the Hebrew letters, uh, yud he vav he. So in a sense, the Kabbalists believe that the yud he vav he was a bridge between the infinite 
and the finite. So the Yud is at the top. The Keter is the chakra. The Keter is where we come in contact with the Ein Sof, the infinite light. And then we have the hay. You can, it's the, our arms, the hay. Then we have a vav, our spine, and a lower hay, our lower body, the legs. So we say yud, hay, vav, hay. And a chant that I wrote that depicts we know God, uh, uh, we, God has made us in God's image, is the chant goes yud, hay, vav, hay, it. Is our DNA Yud Hey Vav Hey? It is our DNA Yud Hey Vav Hey. It's our DNA. Now, another beautiful thing that to visualize uh, when we're made in God's image, but so is the rest of creation. Look <coughs> at a tree. Well, I got one right here. <laughs> so, I might as well use that. So we have the year way at the top. That's where the um, the, the growth, um, I think of it as called the growth point is. And we have the upper hay. We have a trunk, which is the spine above. And then we have the roots, the lower hay. Look at a dog. Think about it. It's in the same image. Good hay, above hay. So um, that's one way of looking at you know, a God making creation in God's image. Um, so, um, and I don't know if that's, um, there's no right and wrong here. So if somebody has, um, says that blessing and it really means, you know, you say it with Kavanah, it means to you what it means to you. Uh, it, 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 it can mean more than one thing. That's what I like about Jewish stories. You know, the rabbi says one thing, the Rebbitzin says something different and they're both right somehow. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but. It, it works. <laughs> so, um, all right. I was going to, no, I'll save that. I was going to do a meditation around that, but I, uh, maybe we'll do that later. I, I would like us to get some input from each other. So, um, let me, uh, let me just uh, pick out a few and then we'll do it this way. Um, I'll pick out a, a few blessings. I'll mention a blessing. Think about it. And if there's something you really want to share with the group, you'll raise your hand and I'll call on you and, and you'll share. So everybody doesn't have to share each one. We're going to go through a lot of blessings. So, um, But if you really, really want to share, if somebody already said it, then uh, please refrain. Because uh, uh, I've got a whole bunch of goodies for tonight. I want to have time to share them. Um, <laughs> So, well, let's start with the one that, that usually um, starts off the blessings. And um, I'll give a few, let me just give um, two different translations instead of like four, like I did last week. And then you'll think about what it means to you. So in Marsha Prager's uh, Siddur, um, she says, you make us conscious beings. But traditionally, the translation is, you th we're thanking God for the understanding to know the difference between day and night. And if you really want to get literal, it really says, we're thanking God for the rooster who knows to crow at daybreak. The rooster knows to crow at daybreak. We have an understanding to know the difference between day and night. Now, if you were to say that blessing, what would that mean to you? Or what, what does that mean to you uh, if your practice is to use that particular morning blessing? Nobody? The understanding to know the difference between... Roxanne. 
the thing that comes to mind immediately is the difference between right and wrong. Okay. That's, I've heard that one before. Mm -hmm. You know, what's, what's, uh, I, I like to say that a lot of these uh, blessings are like Torah study in that there's a simple meaning which you know, a rooster crows at daybreak, thank God. Sometimes on my bicycle, I hear the birds chirping. So I hear the bird, I, I, I'm thankful, it's the same blessing. Um, and um, yeah, anybody have a different, oh, oh, let me just finish the thought. So yeah, there's different levels of understanding. So there's a, there, there might be a metaphoric, you know, it might stand for something else. And I would like to share some of the mystical because that's the least known of these blessings. And um, there's a resurgence in Judaism, mainly through Jewish renewal, which is our community of bringing back the mystical tradition. It's been lost for a long time and or I shouldn't say lost. It's been held to a small group of practitioners for a very long time and it is now opening uh, since since the uh the Baal Shem Tov it's been opening and opening and opening more and more and more so Bruce I saw your hand uh, just being grateful for awareness love it and um, just one more thing we have current we have roosters next door and they 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 do it all the time. I know they do. <laughs> yeah, we we have roosters up the road too. You're absolutely right. Um, so we can say the blessings all day. It's sort of like going into a diner and they serve breakfast all day. <laughs> um, all right. So um, I'm going to propose something a little bit different. There's a couple of things. It says to me, well, first of all, the difference, the, the understanding to know the difference between a day and night is the is bariya, the, the world of the intellect. We have a right brain and a, and a left brain. People take for granted the miracle that we live in, the miracle that, that we're encased in. I mean, we have this organ that somehow can remember, that somehow can create. We have a right brain and a left brain that does different things. We can remember, we can, uh, uh, um, we could process and um, figure out problems uh, and many different things. And uh, I, I, I thank God for that ability. I understand, uh, you know, and, and and there's so much um, uh, we could say about the light and the dark, like Roxanne said, you know, uh, essentially the the good, the evil, the positive, the uh, the, the light, the darkness, and so on. All the uh, dualities that we have in in this physical plane. Um, but there's one more thing I like to share about this, and that is. Um, purpose. One of the things it says to me is that God gave the birds a purpose. They chirp in the morning or they, they or they crow, the rooster crows at daybreak. It understands innately the difference. It's day, chirp, chirp, chirp. It's night, sleep, sleep, sleep. Flowers, you know, it's daytime, some of the petals open up, it's night. They they just know, it's instinctive, it's innate. It's their purpose. A bird does bird. It knows its purpose. A tree does tree. It's named the tree because it's being tree. Um, human, there's a little confusion on that one. Like, what's our purpose? And I like it. I, and this blessing reminds me of... Uh, purpose, my individual purpose, um, the Hasidim believe that every single human being has an individual, special, unique role in this universe. 
it might be a one-time thing, it might be just a breath at the right time, whatever. You have something that nobody else has. We also have a tribal purpose. Um, so um, when we get to the other blessing Yisrael, I'll say more about it, but um, people, different groups of people have a, a tribal purpose. None better than all. I say, Reb Zalman would say, each one essential to the full functioning of the universe. That's why Reb Zalman always says the only way to get it together is together. Because uh, a, a world with that's only f functioning, uh, it's sort of like a mosaic or a puzzle. You know, you're missing a few pieces. You don't got the whole picture. You need the whole picture together to make it together. Um, so uh, purpose. And then there's humanity's purpose. And I've said this in a couple of different forums. I've said this at our meditation group uh, on Wednesdays, that I believe that humanity as a whole has a purpose. Why are we here? What's our function? I firmly believe in my belief system that we are here as human beings to be that bridge on this plane of existence to bring down that light that that the, that the reality is that the the universe is perfect it's whole it's complete it's shalom it's a garden that's fully functioning and growing we call gan eden and in the story that when we had the big bang and the universe was formed that the shards of light scattered all over the universe and we are also a shard of light inside a body and our function is to bring all of those shards back together by doing to tikkun olam by loving each other the way we want to be loved to to make peace in our hearts in our communities on our planet to bring awareness of the oneness of god the, the, down to this plane and if everybody had all of those wonderful things i can't imagine why we'd have conflict um it just there wouldn't be no need for it it wouldn't exist so to bring that light of shalom shalom means wholeness complete complete that's the plane of the aim sof of the oneness of the light so humanity's purpose make this plane reflect that plane so the understanding to know the difference between day and night um so incidentally all of those thoughts don't come out of me every morning like that um but I do have a kavanah of the purpose. That's what comes to me that, wow, I have a purpose. My people have a purpose. We, we all have a purpose. It just hits me in the heart. Okay. So let's take another one. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Ruach HaOlam you give us all that we need you give us all that we need what does that mean to some of you well i that i have i have a roof over my head i have food in my refrigerator thankfully to friends who and my son who shop for me while i've been 
recovery. Uh, I have strengths to deal with COVID. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so somebody else, you were in the C-Door, you were in the middle of a service and uh, Rep. Mark doesn't do all of the morning blessings. He does some, and then we fill in with our personal gratitudes and then does a few more, uh, usually the same ones each week. Um, so maybe we, we focus on some of those too. Um, but if you were to say that, what, what would you be thinking? Deborah? Well, I take that more and more to mean that um, you know, it's like the Rolling Stone song, you know, you can't always get what you want, but if we're observant and we're in the world and we are mindful of what we have and what comes our way, we really are getting what we need. Thank you. Somebody else was talking. I didn't see. Hannah? To me, it's being fulfilled. Being fulfilled. Great. So, on a Kabbalistic level, they believe that everything is God. Reality is God. And um, thanking God for all of our needs might not always be what you think uh, in terms of something positive. Can we thank God for providing for our needs for something that we feel is a problem or that we perceive as being negative. Um, there's a way of reframing. If you believe that everything is from God, that means even the difficult, challenging stuff is from God. After all, God is dark and God is light. And you can't have the light without the dark. So when we receive some dark, then uh, if everything's God, then that is God too. So, um, and that is a, is a very hard lesson. Um, when we do the uh, aging to saging program, we talk about thanking God for our severe teachers, those people in our lives that uh, might have been abusive, might have been whatever negatives we could think of. But was there something that we learned that was so valuable to our growth that we could reframe that into something that where we can truly say, wow, God provided for all my needs. That's, that's a hard level to get to. Um, and uh, there's been uh, many questions asked in that realm. You know, how could God let this happen? How could God let that happen? Um, and that's a, it's a difficult one. So just, I'm just throwing that out. If anybody wants to comment on that. Bruce. I struggle with <clears throat> with the um, the wording of um, uh, God gives me everything, and just as much as I struggle with the phrase God doesn't give me anything, um, it, it I I had a I don't know if it was a dream or just whatever. I was waking up one morning and I had a a dream or a vision or an image. And the image was 
a, a, a voice with not with no material being and there were just two words no thing mm. um so i i just really struggle with god gives me everything but god doesn't give me anything it's already there ah. for me to become aware of or to latch on to um, or to just to grab uh, even in the morning if if we get up and reach out maybe we're we're able to grab something when we reach out maybe there's a uh, an invisible presence or spirit that we're able to grab onto and then it becomes a part of us even if it's just for a moment wow thank you bruce you know if i said give i don't, I don't know if i did if i did i misspoke because uh it would be um everything is god god is everything i don't know if that has the same meaning to you or not but that's what i i i meant to say um I don't know if there's a, a difference in the semantics there or not. Sharon. I think the way that, that I have always looked at it, given the, the life that I have had, and I've had many, many ups and downs, um, I think my belief is just, it's not that God gives us everything, but I think God provides us an opportunity as human beings to make choices. He doesn't give us the choices, but he gives us the opportunity for us to make choices. And that could be the choice between good and bad, happy and sad. Um, you don't know happiness unless you've experienced sadness. You don't know good unless you've experienced bad because you have nothing to compare it to. So you really don't know if something is good unless you experience something bad and something good comes out of it. Well, Sharon, so, let's take that another step. This is good because the next blessing, we would say, Baruch atah Eloheinu melech ha'olam. Sha'asani ben Horin Amen. And that's um, thank you, God, for giving us freedom. Exactly what you were just talking about. So that could also have a number, thanking God for making us free, um, giving us the choice, giving us free will. Um, but what else could that mean? Thanking God for making us free or giving us freedom. Deborah? Well, I wanted to comment on what we were just talking about, which I guess fits with it. Um, so I've just been grappling with this idea of obstacles and really nothing is an obstacle because it's always, a, it presents an opportunity. And so if I believe that God creates those, I can't, I can't believe that God creates abusive people, like abusive people who abuse children, for example, or other things. So then I had to come to a place that says, yes, but God also gives us free will. And so some of the things that come into our life are not necessarily um, the best things that could have happened, but because we are put in this world with our soul, but also we're with other people, God does not move people around like um, chess play, play, chess moves or chess pieces. So things can happen. And that gave me a place to kind of balance it and say, okay, then we have to mediate those things. We have to learn from all of those things, but they aren't necessarily lessons that God created for us. It yeah. is just the way things happen. 
a lot of the problem with uh, discussing this on uh, on the physical uh, level um, is that uh, the Kabbalists believe that uh, we're not meant to be in this physical form at all. We're meant to be light beings in a skin of light, in a world of light, and that when we come to a finite world in a physical body, um, there's things that we experience that in a sense we're not meant to experience. That if uh, we lived uh, in the dream that we all have of a world of peace, and that's not a physical world in a sense. It's a world in a different plane of existence. That's far out stuff. So um, it's it's some of it's absolutely mind blowing or beyond mind blowing. Um, I saw another hand. Well, Mine. Oh, Sharon. It's mine. It's interesting that you're talking about this now because I I love watching the Weather Channel and today particularly, I think that what you're talking about. Um, they have this brand new telescope that just went oh, up yeah, yeah. today and yeah. um, they were, it's beaming back these pictures of other galaxies and exactly what you're talking about. I look at these gorgeous photos of other galaxies that are just millions of light years away and it just, it brings me to a whole nother level because I think to myself, maybe that's what what we're in. We're in a galaxy. And and really, when you look at these photos, there's darkness and there's light. And that's really all you see. And it's like what you're talking about now. I mean, it, it just really hit me today looking at these photographs from galaxies that are, are millions of light years away. Sharon, yeah, I saw those pictures on the news last night and I was, my mouth was wide open. I yeah. blew me away. Uh, yeah, phenomenal. So another thing about this, Pesach, what's that holiday all about? What's, if you could squeeze Pesach into one word, what would you say? Freedom. Thank you. Freedom. We're thanking God for freedom and for making us free. Never take that for granted. If, if you ever have an inkling of what it's like, what it would be like, read the book Roots, and then you will understand how... Um, how much of a gift it is. And our tradition teaches that none of us are free until every single one of us is free. So we thank God for our freedom, but that should never stop us for working for freedom for everybody because there are slaves still. Believe it or not, 2022, and in this world, there are st there's still slavery somewhere. And it's our responsibility to um, end slavery, no matter where. All right, so let me pick a nice different one here. So Mark. Yes. What I'd like to know is how did you get started with this whole, you know, this, you're you're doing your morning blessings. Yes. Is this something that came to you ten years ago, twenty years ago? Oh uh, no, that Carol Ann, thank you for asking. That. I've been on a very long journey. I uh, I grew up in a conservative Jewish household that didn't really do it for me. I met Reb Zalman when I was in nineteen. I have to do the math. Nineteen seventy nine. I was a young whippersnapper. And I had already gone to many different um, 
traditions by that time and and uh so i, I i'm i'm a work in progress <laughs> um i've been um adding slowly but surely i i i i've had a bumpy road too carol ann and i've not done things for many years and then i came back to it and so mm -hmm. on and so forth but like everybody else i'm growing and learning um, i just wondered if you could provide some kind of um you know road to start uh, because i i wake up and the first thing i think of is i gotta go downstairs and make my coffee <laughs> i don't eat well you know, make up make up by all means make a blessing over the coffee because okay. interestingly okay. enough, in my class that I'm taking, uh, we were talking uh, two weeks ago. The the lesson was about um, uh, seeing the godliness in food, and uh, as our closing tonight, um, the lesson we had this week were uh, looking at, um, like Sharon said, out into the different galaxies out there, and the thinking about other places other beings other um angels other kinds of beings that might be out there and we're going to close with that a little bit before we go into the dream world tonight <laughs> but um i hear you yeah <laughs> oh bless the <your> coffee <laughs> yeah so yeah you know there's there's sparks in the coffee that we need to release, just like there's sparks of healing. Um, by, oh, just got to think from Bruce. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, let me see. Aha. Thank God for spreading the earth over the waters thank god for spreading the earth over the waters why would that be included in our morning blessings and that we can walk on it <laughs> mary rita well for me it connects me with creation you know, because it is it is one of the the days of creation. So it connects me with another aspect of creation and makes me think of the waters above and the waters below and um, and God's presence, you know, God's presence in all. Thank you, Mary Rita. When I was saying before that I'm riding my bicycle, you know, I get along and I, I happen to live along a river. So I'm riding and I'm looking at the river and I'm thanking God for spreading out the earth above the waters. And then I just go off into creation. Thank God for that blue sky and those clouds up there. Thank God for the trees that are all over, you know, and so on. So, yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> it's like the door to creation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. It's a, it's a door to creation. A portal. It's one of the portals. Anybody have a different, uh, Sharon? Human beings, we're mostly made up of water. So, when, you know, it's kind of like, and the earth is mostly made up of water. I mean, it's three quarters water. Water is everywhere. It's in the clouds. It's, it's always surrounding us. It's in the air. It's in our breath. It's in our saliva. We're basically made up of water with skin covering it. So, you know, Water is, is really the, the true basis of life here on Earth. You know, the, 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 the new telescope can sense and, and read if there's hydration in these galaxies that, and they've actually, it's actually already determined or found that there is hydration in some of those galaxies that were shown to us in the photographs so it's uh it's out there there there's there's they 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 discovered hydration on mars so they 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 with the recent um rover so 
Um, there's water everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I want to apologize for that. You know, as a as a good teacher, I, I disconnected the phone. Nobody ever calls me on my cell phone. Nobody. I don't know where that came from. It's probably a robo call. I never thought to disconnect my cell phone because I don't use it. Um, <laughs> Mitzi. <laughs> Can't hear you, Mitzi. Oh, I'm just not, you know, I just, this the mic hasn't been plugged in. Um, I was just looking at the moral. We can, Mitzi, we can barely hear you. You've got voice, but very. Like I just plugged in the mic. There you go. Um, I, I didn't realize, I'd forgotten I had unplugged it during the storm. Um, I'm just looking at the Jewish, um, the Reconstructionist, Sador, as we're going along. And there's a covenant here for that particular blessing. And we give thanks to the, it says underneath the blessing, like here's something we could think about. We give thanks that we're restored whole and healthy to consciousness and to an orderly universe. That is why in the second blessing, we give thanks that when we step out of bed, our feet encountered not the watery chaos, which preceded creation, but the solid earth, which God spread over the waters. The daily emergence from unconsciousness reminds us of our fragility as human creatures and our need for support. Wow, thank you. Incidentally, that's from a reconstructionist, Sidor. Um, wow. Um, now, last week, we started to learn um, a choreography that Reb Zalman taught. So I would just like to do maybe two or three of those blessings using that choreography, but in a little bit differently than we did last week. So for those of you who would like to do it standing up, if you would join me, and I'll just review the choreography. And again, imagine we're standing in a circle. Everybody can see everybody else. So the chorus, everybody does together. And it would go, uh, Baruch Atah Havaya. And then we sweep the world. Eloheinu Ruach HaOlam. And then Reb Zalman would point to somebody and give them uh, um, an assignment. Say, uh, you, uh, you have, um, thanking God for giving us vision. So, um, and that person would come up with a movement. So I'm going to pick on Deborah. So you have Deborah, uh, you're going to show the whole group a movement to depict thanking God for vision. All right, so we all do that. And then all together in the circle, we all, uh, Deborah is the leader for this one. So we're all going to look at you, Deborah, and we're all going to go, Baruch Atah Havaya Eloheinu Ruach HaOlam we thank you, God, for vision. And we all say, Amen. And then we'd go on to the next person. And, um, oh, oh, that's, oh, there, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I said, it's not on that page. Um, I want to do this one uh, because of, uh, this one, I believe, has a little bit more of a mystical underneath it. And that is removing sleep from my eyes and slumber from my eyelids. Now, remember before, um, Reb Zaman says, you know, to get all the last bits of sleep out of our system. So Removing sleep from our eyes or slumber from our eyelids. Just think what that means to you personally. It might not even mean exactly the words on the page, but who would volunteer to come up with a movement to teach us that? Mary Rita. Baruch Ata Adonai. We were we we remove sleep from our eyes 
and slumber from our eyelids. Baruch atah Eloheinu ruach haolam. You remove sleep from our eyes and slumber from our eyelids. Amen. And so like Mark... I I like Mark invites us at times if we like when we are when we are doing um, this in the schma in the yeah, in a, yeah. In a, in a, oh yeah yeah I kissed each of the eyelids well so besides opening I kissed them well I like that you know in the third a paragraph of Shema, it says that we should put a thread of blue on our garments and look at it to remind us. So I take my blue, I, I have okay. blue threads on my talus, and I take the blue tzitzi and I put them on my eyes and kiss it, just like that. <laughs> um, we're running out of time, and I really want to do a, a, a wonderful little closing. Um, Again, wow, an hour and 15 minutes, it's gone already, wow. Um, so I just want to say that I translate that blessing. I don't say removing. I thank God for awakening my awareness. That's how I translate that particular blessings. Thanking God for awakening my awareness, removing the sleep from my eyes, the slumber from my eyelids. All right, so... Let's get into a comfortable position. And this is a little meditation to send you off to bed and hopefully you'll wake up in the morning and say your morning blessings. And if you would like, close your eyes and see yourself sitting in a lotus position if you can or just sitting with your legs crossed and if you choose cross your legs now with your eyes closed and take a few cleansing deep breaths um i would do an entire meditation but i'm going to shorten it for time take a few deep deep breaths into your nose out through your mouth and center yourself and imagine you are sitting across from your guardian angel whatever that might be to you if you have an image use your imagination it could be a person it could be you it could be an animal it could be an energy it could be anything but whatever you would perceive as your guardian angel sitting across looking at you and you're in a dyad you could be holding hands um, you could be connected now imagine on your right is the archangel michael Archangel Michael, whatever that image might come, Michael is the angel of love, of loving kindness, of chesed. Michael is there now to send you lots of love. On your left, sitting facing your little group, is the art angel Gabriel, who is the angel of strength, Gibura, strength and courage, fortitude. Gabriel is there to send you might and support to you and to all who need strength. On 
sitting in front of your dyad, in front of you and your guardian, Uriel, the archangel of light, and of vision. Uriel is there to send your light and radiation to all the dark places in the world to bring you warmth and illumination and to bring you extra light in your life. Sitting directly behind you, Raphael, the angel of healing. Raphael is there to heal your spirit, your mind, your body, and any ailment or injury. Hovering above you is the energy of the Shekhinah, the feminine presence of God. Shekhinah is there for us to embrace her light. Shekhinah is over all of us together in our group. Open your, your, your hearts as I sing you a lullaby. Melody by Shalomo Karlbach. This is called the Angel Song. It's a children's lullaby. You just breathe it in, take it in for a few moments. Die, 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 die. Dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Yai dai 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 Vial Roshi Vial Roshi Shekhinah El Vial Roshi Vial Roshi Shekhinah El Dai 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 And when you go to sleep tonight ask God for forgiveness for anything wrong that you've done, whether it was conscious or done unconsciously, and you forgive others too, then say Shema Yisrael 
and declare the oneness of God, and then sleep soundly with many dreams, as Shekhinah guides your sleep. And when you wake up tomorrow, say Mode Ani, and thank God for everything you have. Say them either in the morning blessings as we've learned tonight, or any way that you can. Da 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 da. Bum 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 bum. I thank God and I bless us all that we wake up with a covenant of blessing tomorrow for all of the wonderful miracles in our lives. Amen. It is 8.15. We started on time and we'll finish on time. I thank you all for coming to our class. And next class, hopefully the Marx Brothers will be back together and we'll um, team teach something else in our wonderful C-Door. Thank you, our fabulous Gazumbai, Deborah, who punted when you couldn't get those screen shares up and we just went with it. Thank you for your flexibility, appreciate it. Oh, you did really well, Adlib. I think we did well. I think yeah. we did well. <laughs> Very well.